<laughs> evidence at all whatsoever. <laughs> wow. I was in, I was pastoring in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Some, <clears throat> I got to meet a man who was teaching about the Constitution, and <clears throat> I heard him for a little bit. And then I moved to Michigan. We started to work up in Memphis, Michigan. The town was 125 years old, never had a Baptist church in 125 years. <laughs> But anyway, <clears throat> for some dumb reason, I wanted to be a Notre Republic. <laughs> so I went through all the paraphernalia to get it, you know. They called me one day and they said, Dr. Davis, your, your notary's in, come down to the courthouse and get it. And I said, okay. So I go down there and the lady says, uh, raise your right hand. I said, oh, oh, wait a minute. I joined the Army years ago. I'm already discharged. You know? <laughs> and uh, she said, no, 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 no. Just I said, what for? She said, you got to swear it up on the Constitution. Hmm. I said, lady, I don't know what it says. <laughs> yeah, make it we don't need it. Oh, great. Wow. That's great. I said, this is the courthouse. <laughs> she said, well, that don't make any difference. I said, well, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't do that. And I walked out. I went to my office and found a copy of the Constitution. Began studying it. And uh, began studying it. <laughs> and then I asked God, because he said, render unto Caesar that Caesar is unto God is God. Mm -hmm. Well, my question was, who was Caesar in America? I mean, who was, who was his counterpart in America? What does Caesar represent? Yeah, I America? know Caesar was a dictator. Mm -hmm. right? Dictatorial form of government. Well, what kind of form of government do we have? Democrat. A what? Chocolate Democratic. No. 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 <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to this republic. Okay. We have a republic because it's by the people, for the people. Dem we have a democratic republic. Okay. One man, one vote. <coughs> for the people, by the people. The people run America. Washington don't. They've got it screwed up up there. But <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm still going to stand on So. <coughs> And then I got to thinking, what does every person do before they take office in the United States? To do what? More like this, actually. Yeah. <laughs> to do what? To uphold the Constitution. Protect mm -hmm. and defend. So if that's true, <clears throat> then the Constitution is over them. When I went into the military, I had to swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States. It was over me. Mm -hmm. So then I realized in America, number one, the Bible is the Word of God. That's the final authority in everybody's life. The Constitution has to be the final civil authority. Okay? we got the Word of God and the Constitution because the Bible said, render unto Caesar that Caesar. In America, Caesar is not a person. Caesar is a document. It's called the Constitution of the United States because that's what everybody's... You listen to these congressmen and all, they just say, oh man, what a constitution, you know, we, we go by the constitution, you don't even know what it says, much less. Right. Go by it. So the constitution is over you and I, as far as civil law is concerned. Okay? You agree with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if that's true, what does it say? I okay. probably don't know any more than you did when you walked <laughs> <laughs> away. No. I didn't know. I didn't know what it said. That's the reason I wouldn't swear to it. it I told him to go out and hang myself, you know. And I, I just didn't want to try that too often. And 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 so that's and that's the problem with Christian Americans today, is they do not know who Caesar is, and then they don't know what Caesar has at what Caesar asked for. Okay. Okay. Now, if I'm going to be the Christian that I'm supposed to be according to the Word of God. Am I supposed to know that, or does it really not matter? I think you probably should know that. Well, seems I think like, it's imperative. Yeah, I mean, pretty, that, seems like it would be important. Well, if God says, render unto Caesar Caesar's, if I don't know what Caesar asks for, then, 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 then you I... can't render it. <laughs> yeah, then, then, then what do I do? See? Maybe Caesar don't ask for anything. Or maybe Caesar asks for more than I'm giving him. But yet, at the same time, I'm not to give to God what belongs to Caesar. I'm not to give to Caesar what belongs to God. 
So then I had to sit down and find out what what belongs to whom. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells me that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So everything belongs to God. Well, what belongs to Caesar? Mm -hmm. Well, until we pick it up and begin to read it, we don't know what belongs to Caesar. Again, we should. Preachers should teach mm -hmm. that. See? Uh, in order to be honest with themselves. But they don't because it's too controversial. Okay? And the, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you don't need to open it now, but I'm going to give you a pack of books. Mm. And the first one is the First Padlock Church in America. Mm. They took 63 of us preachers in a prayer meeting on 6 o'clock in the morning. The highway patrol and the sheriff's department dragged us out of the church and threw us in the snow. And they went behind and padlocked the church. That's what this book is about. Really? You were having yeah. a prayer meeting in the church? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they, they locked the preacher up because he was running a Christian school. Put him in jail. Okay. They went and got seven dads and put them in jail because their children were in Christian education. The state of Nebraska said, no, we don't want you to have Christian schools. If you're going to, you're going to have, you're going to have them according to how the state of Nebraska wants it done. Well, no, that's, that's why we don't have, that's why we have Christian schools, because the state schools are so improper, and, you know, no good. Right. And so what, that's, that's what this book is about. The second book is the Bible and the Constitution that I wrote. Okay? And, and, and then the third book is the Red Book, is on this called Purified Seven Times. Hmm. It's the history of what man paid that we might have the King James Bible today. I mean, burning at the stake, killed, all that. It's all in this book right here. And then the other book is, is uh, The Trail of Blood. It's the history of why Baptists are Baptists and they're not Protestants. And that's what the trail of blood. It even has a map that starts in, in the back. It shows you from the cross on to today. And then the last one is a copy of the Constitution. Oh. So I want <coughs> if wow. you take that home and 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 and, and wow. study it. Okay. okay. That's for y'all. <coughs> uh, so I did. I, I went and got a copy of the Constitution. And I began studying it. Article one, section eight, clause one said <coughs> that. Uh, Congress has a right to lay in, uh, to, 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 lay and collect taxes on import, exports, and, and federal excise tax. Okay, well, what is that? Imports and exports, we know what that is. Where's my Constitution? I just had my Bible rebound and I sent it off and I just got it back, so. Do you want to borrow this one? No, I, 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 <laughs> I, I understand there's one right there. I know, but I, I about got it all. Uh, but anyway, the, 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 the Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1 says Congress has a right to raise uh, to Congress has a right to, to lay taxes on import, export, and, fine, and federal excise tax. That's Congress's responsibility to lay those taxes. Well, what's imports? That's when bring somebody brings somebody from somewhere else, okay? What's exports? That's when it goes out. What's the federal excise tax? No idea. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> years ago, <clears throat> if you bought a set of tires, you paid a federal excise tax on it. If you bought jewelry, you paid a federal excise tax on those. They've taken a lot of that off of merchandise nowadays, which they shouldn't have. They should have left it on, and that'd be a federal, that, that's a proper tax. And so that's what the federal excise tax is. And it says, for the general welfare of the, United St of, of the people of the United States. Well, the general welfare does not mean the welfare program. That means if you get five dollars, I get five dollars, and he gets five dollars. Or they cut it off in the in the government to be sure that the government is run properly. And so that's what I could now. Uh, Maxine Waters in California, she said, "Now we the reason we can have this Obamacare is because of Article One, Section Eight, Clause One." And I said, "You're lying. It's not for that. It's not for the, that type of." Uh, 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 I think it's it's everything has to be equal on, on the import, export, and, and the excise tax for the general purpose. The, so when you say the general for the general purpose, that's what it means that's where you get it has to be equal. 
Well, yeah, yeah that's what right, right. right. Okay, if, that's yeah, right. If, you're going to, if, if you was going to buy a set of tires and it had excise tax on it, and you didn't want to pay that tax, just don't buy the tires. Right. So but you have to pay it. He has to pay it. I have to pay that's it. right. And okay. the same same percentage. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> then you come down into Article One, Section Eight, Clause Four and Five, talks about coins. Go down to Article One, Section Eight, Clause Twelve, and it says Congress has a right to raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for a longer term than two years. Okay, that's, and it goes down to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, uh, guarantees us a republic, a, a, that every state is sovereign and a republic. Okay, that's why these guys haven't read it. Hmm. Article 1, Section 8, uh, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3, says there shall be no ex post facto law. Well, what does that mean? Ex post facto means after the fact. Clinton tried to make a law and made it retroactive to January. They couldn't do that, so they had to put it out. You can't make a law today and make it retroactive back to mm. any time. You can't do that. That's ex post facto. Three times in the Constitution that word ex post facto was in there. Article 1, Section 9, Article 1, Section 10, and um, twice in Article 1, Section 10. Article 1, Section 9, uh, Section 9, Clause 4 says, There shall be no... I understand that word. No. no. They hadn't learned it yet, but we'll teach it to them. <laughs> there shall be no capitalization. What's capitalization? In Great Britain, before, when they were establishing America, in Great Britain they had a poll tax. Where well, they come around to the house, how many lives here? Four of us, well, it's $100 a piece, give us $400. And they did that in every house in, in, in Great Britain. And that's called, and that's a poll tax. Mm -hmm. They didn't want that in the United States. So there should be no capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless enumeration here before a director be taken. Unless they say we have two million people in the United States with two million dollars in debt, we need a dollar from each person. Article 1, section 9, clause 4. Now, any time that they changed the, the Constitution, amended it, changed it, or superseded it, they would put the change in brackets, and then down at the bottom of the page, they would say, so-and-so changed to the 16th Amendment or the 18th, I mean, not 16th, but 17th Amendment, and they would tell you where it was changed. Well, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 4, no brackets, no change. No okay. amendments. No amendments. No nothing. But at the bottom of the page, there's an asterisk in there. <laughs> and it says, but C. Now, does but C mean the same thing as amended by? Not in my English language. Does but C mean the same thing as superseded? No. It just says but C. And so then it takes us over to the 16th Amendment, which is the supposed to be the Constitutional Amendment. Number one, the 16th Amendment, I've asked Rob Woodall, Jesse Helm, John East, Bob Dole, what does the 16th Amendment amend? It can't be in an amendment unless it's amending something, right? What does the 16th Amendment amend? Rob Woodall said the Constitution. I said, come on, Rob. What does the 16th Amendment amend? He said, I don't know. I thought it was amend the Constitution. I said, no, don't, be, don't be dumb. <laughs> well, all the rest of them say, well, because the 16th Amendment doesn't amend anything. There's nothing in the Constitution. I have the Constitution. Matter of fact, is Rob gave me it. He knew I collected it. And so when he got elected, he, he said, he said, Doc, he said, come on to my office. We got just printed some new constitution. We want to give you a copy. I said, okay, good. I took it home and started reading it. And I looked up at my wife. I said, honey, this thing's wrong. And so I happened to have a meeting with them on Monday the, the next week. And so I met with them. And I said, Rob, I said, you gave me a copy of the constitution. That's wrong. Oh, Davis, come on. You're just a preacher down here. I said, don't you talk to me like that. I said, this thing is wrong. You opened it up. Well, he said, that's wrong. I said, yes. 
He said, what should we do? I said, burn them. He said, we printed 250,000 copies. I said, have a big fire. <laughs> well, that's no problem. And, they, and so about six weeks after that, we met in the courthouse and he said, oh, Davis, by the way, he said, we got somebody working on that constitution. And I said, good. Who? He said, we got some lawyers. I said, forget it. Because they, they don't know what they're doing. They just don't know. So anyway, the 16th Amendment doesn't amend anything. It was passed by uh, at, 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 on a Christmas break with nobody, none of the state. I mean, an amendment has to have three-fourths of the states to agree with it. Okay? There's a book out. You can get it on the Internet. It's called The Law That Never Was, written by Bill Benson and Red Beckman, personal friends, great guys. They have 34,000 certified, certified documents. The difference between a document and a certified document, the certified document can be presented in court as a live person. Hmm. They have 37,000 certified documents that no state of the Union ratified the 16th Amendment. Hmm. Okay? And that's the income tax amendment. It was written for, for corporations, not for individuals. And it was only it was written for just two percent, but America has allowed these people to pick it up. You say it was written for corporations? Yes, yeah. wasn't, wasn't written for individuals. Okay, but it still don't, it doesn't amend nothing. You can't write an amendment and then not amend something, so it still has no authority. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> then I then, then I go back to Article One, Section Eight, Clause Twelve. Okay. Congress had a right to raise and support armies, but no appropriation of this, the money this used be longer term than two years. Okay, what happened in 1944? Second World War, right? The first time in the history of America was your granddaddy and your daddy ever taxed on their wages. It was 1944. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. It was on, it was, it's called, I have the certified document, I, I, I opening a new warehouse and I, I closed it down quickly and ran home and, and uh, I forgot to pick it up and bring it to the church. I have certified document, uh, the Victory Tax Act on Individuals. Hmm. That's what it's called. It was, it was written in 1942, not 44, written in 1942 when the war started. Congress has a right to raise and support armies, but no money this year should be for a longer term than two years. It was written in 42. Two years would be what? 44. The war was still on. They kept it. Two years is what? 46. 46. One was the war over with. 45. The last two paragraphs of that bill <coughs> says this bill ceases when the wars between the United States, Germany, Japan, and Italy ceases. Mm. <clears throat> Victory tax on individuals. Okay? Mm -hmm. This bill ceases. The war was over with 1945, right? So this bill ceased. The Treasury Department went to Congress and said, Can we continue putting 1040s out on a voluntary basis? And as long as it was voluntary, they could do it. And what would their purpose be in that? Why would they want to continue to? Why do they want to continue? Well, they would get money. Okay. That's what politicians want. <laughs> the more money they get, the more control they have of you. See? And they've used this tool of the Internal Revenue Service as a tool to make slaves out of Americans. Mm -hmm. See? We were, we were, <clears throat> America was freed of slavery under Lincoln. See? <clears throat> but since, since 1913, when the 16th Amendment was written, <clears throat> And when we didn't have a president for the United States in 1913, did we? No. Let me see, that was Mr. Taft, wasn't it? I don't remember. <laughs> All right, so we got to stop here now. 1913, let's go back to there. Instead of 42, let's go back to 1913, because that's when the 16th Amendment was written. Okay? It was written in 1913. But the individuals were never taxed till 1942. Hmm. So let's look, go back to 1913 and who was president? Well, that was Mr. Taft. Where was he from? Uh -huh. Ohio. That's right. <laughs> Wonderful. Isn't that great? Oh, wait a minute. 
when did Ohio become a state of the union? <laughs> this is interesting. You should know that. Yeah, I don't know when it became. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Right. Ex post facto still in existence. <laughs> huh? Ex post facto still in existence. It's okay. In 1951, Public Law 205 for admitting the state of Ohio into the Union. 1955? 1951. 51? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. I have the certified copies of, of that. And they wrote it with the ex post facto to 1803. <laughs> Wait a minute. The Constitution says what? No, no ex post facto. Okay, so Ohio became a state. In 1951. Did they just miss it then? Or was it just not what happened back then? <laughs> just didn't do it. <clears throat> okay. Now, that's not quite so bad. <laughs> There's seven presidents from the state of Ohio before it ever became a state of the Union. <laughs> See? Wow. Now, when we don't know what this is, we can't, we, 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 we don't know what this said, and so we, we can't put them together. See? Now, what difference does that make? Well, we had, a, we had a, 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 a president that wasn't... If a man lived in Canada, but he drove under the tunnel every day and was a big executive in, in Detroit, can he run for president? No. Well, he's one of the big whoopee-doos here. That don't make any difference. He can't do it because he's in... Well, that's just across the river. That don't make any difference. So was Ohio, just across the river from Detroit, from, from Michigan or the other states. <laughs> West Virginia has never been a proper state of the Union. That's what I was going to ask you. Are there other states that have not? That's interesting. Pardon me? <laughs> so there are other states that well, were in this there's two. <laughs> West Virginia and Ohio. West Virginia, in order for, according to the Constitution, in order for a state to become a state from another state, it has to be granted by the other state. It's going to be such. Virginia never has granted the ability for West Virginia to become West Virginia. Hmm. Okay, well, if we if the president wrong, 13th, the 16th Amendment is wrong, it's never been ratified by any state of the Union as, should I obey it? Well, God says, render unto God, it's God, and unto Caesar, it's Caesar's. What does Caesar say? I guess that it's Caesar not. had two letters. One starts at the end, ends with an O. No capitalization or other direct tax shall be laid. See? <clears throat> the IRS. Our, our tax system is built on individual self-assessment and voluntary compliance. Hmm. The IRS. We must tell you whether your response is mandatory, voluntary, or required to obtain a benefit. Now, what in the world did they say? Where does it say that? Or where, you mean that's... In 1984, I was traveling the nation, and I was making a statement public that the word required, <laughs> title, uh, title 26 is the IRS's title. It's 12 volumes, 14 volumes now, but it was 12 volumes when I was traveling the nation. And in the 12 volumes, there's no place that the word says required to do anything with the IRS. You are required to file. No, it doesn't say that. You are required to pay. It doesn't say that. The word required is nowhere in it at all. So I taught that. In 1984, they, were, they wrote a, the, 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 the IRS wrote a Paperwork Reduction Act and a privacy notice. Well, Paperwork Reduction Act, that's pretty good. We're going to reduce the paperwork, huh? <laughs> no. They lie to us and try to cheat you. And then that they said, we must tell you whether your response is voluntary, mandatory, or required to obtain a benefit. Now the word required is in there. Required to obtain a benefit. What's a benefit? <laughs> That's something over and above what you normally get, isn't it? Well, when is a person ever required to obtain a benefit? <laughs> they just put it in there so the word required would be in there. Not in there today. They took that paragraph out of the Privacy Act today. <laughs> See? They, say they, they don't care. 
Say, you're their slave. You're going to do what, what we tell you to do and we're going to put you in jail. See? Well, I'm still going to stand on the Word of God. God says, render unto Caesar, it's Caesar's. And unto God, it's God. If I give to Caesar what belongs to God, who's right? Both of us wrong. If I give to God what belongs to Caesar, who's right? We're both wrong. I'm not to do that. But I'm to, I'm to, I'm to study to show myself approved unto God, not to man, a workman. That's where we lose 90% of the Baptists anyway. <laughs> a workman. What kind of a workman? One that needeth not to be ashamed. Are you ashamed of the Bible? No. Are you ashamed of the Constitution? No. But if somebody was to ask you a question concerning it, you might be ashamed because you can't answer know it. it. <laughs> That's right. See, so you study to show yourself a prudent, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You study so that I, when, and, and, and it's work to study, and I don't want to be ashamed when somebody asks me a question, I can't give them a biblical or a constitutional answer. And then it says, rightly, correctly, dividing. I just finished seven and a half years, or maybe these are, uh, the book of Revelation, I just, seven and a half years, I put in two books, got us two, there, book, wow. book, book, book two, just, I just got it yesterday. Wow. There's 12 divisions in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> so I'm the rightly divide. I was listening to, uh, what's a guy on 700 Club, Pat Robinson? Mm -hmm. And he was saying that there's only going to be one time that the rapture and the second coming is going to be all the same thing. God help us. No, it's not. The rapture happened before chapter 6 of Revelation. See? And, 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 and the mid-tribulation, uh, uh, that's chapter 10, and then it goes to chapter 19, verse 11. That's seven years. And, and, it's, and it's wrong for really teaching it. See? I've got to correctly divide. But then it says correctly divide the word of truth. What's the first word in 2 Timothy 2.15? Study. What's the last word? Truth. 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 Study. Truth. And all in between matters of whether I'm studying truth. I know. Because I want to show myself. I, I want to be a workman for God. See? But I, I've, got to, I've got to be able to study that I know from cover to cover. I even got to know the cover. It says Holy Bible. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, from cover to cover. And I'm going to know my Constitution because that's civil authority that I'm under. And I've got to obey it. I want to obey it. See? So <clears throat> then if somebody tries to push something off on me that's not right, see, when the judge said to me, Mr. Davis, you do everything required by the IRS, I said, thank you, sir. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing required. It's all I want to do nothing. Oh, yes. See? And so that's, that's, uh, we're going to have another meeting, huh? Okay, good. so much better than So, uh, that's, that's what I've got to do. Okay, now, after I learn it, what do I do with it? Do I put it in practice or do I just say, well, it really don't matter, nobody knows. <laughs> I can't do that. I have two boys. I want them to learn things that God wants them. I have a wife. I don't want her to go before God and say, well, my husband didn't teach me that. When it's my responsibility to teach her that. See? Now, do we like it like that? No, I don't like it like that. I wish the government would straighten out. <laughs> That's why I wrote the book, The Bible and the Constitution. So that we can put the two, two parts of authority together. I'm going to obey the Word of God. It's final authority. I'm going to obey the Constitution. It's the final civil authority. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I teach it. Now it's up to people to obey it. See? You say, boy, that's tough. I don't know whether I knew that or not. Because they have such a... You have a license to be a real estate dealer. And you've got all these to do to, to be that real estate dealer. Okay? And, and, so, and so you have to decide. So you can't, so like you're saying, I can't have a license to be a real estate agent if I don't pay taxes because I'm... I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what the rules are. It's a 1099. It's 1099, yeah. Okay, well 1099 is all right. We get about 60 of them a year. 
my son runs the, I started an asphalt business about 50 years ago. He runs it now. I'm too fat and lazy. <laughs> and of all the businesses that we work for, they sent us 1099s at the end of the year. Okay, well, what do I do with these 1099s? That's a good question. I have a little file. Well, we get so many of them that it's hard to put them in a cabinet. So I've got this little machine that goes, <laughs> and I put them in there and I file them in the, and they're all in this little basket. And so they want them, they can have them, you know, they're, they can put them back together, that's fine too. We just, I mean, my son is 50, 51 years old. Okay. The last time I filed was in 1973. Uh -huh. I have never been charged with an IRS charge. Mm -hmm. and the IRS, when <coughs> the United, I had a meeting with Jesse Helms in Washington, D.C. one day. And Ed Meese, you remember who Ed Meese was? Mm -hmm. Who was he? Attorney General for the United States. Mm -hmm. He came into the office. And he said, uh, you're Dr. Davis, aren't you? I said, yes. He said, well, I want to tell you, we don't want you teaching that anymore. I said, teaching what? He said, what you're teaching? I said, you mean the Bible and the Constitution? He said, yeah. He said, we don't care you know it, but don't teach it anymore. I said, Ed, I said, that's what God's calling me to do. He said, well, if you do, I'm going to put you in jail. And I said, Ed, you do your job, I'm going to do mine. Yeah, he's not doing his job anymore. I'm still doing mine. Okay. Now, and he didn't put you in jail. Pardon me? And what? he didn't put you in jail. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, he did. Okay. For five years. Okay. Yeah. The conspiracy to overthrow the government. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I had I told it. I told it. To, uh, I'm lucky to only get ten years. I had five years in, five years out. Because I told it to it. I said that's what I want. I want to change America. I want America to be a constitutional, biblical constitutional America. He said we don't go by that anymore. The judges are little gods. This is their courtrooms. I'm serious. And they'll tell you. This is my courtroom. I do what I want to do in this. See? And don't make any difference whether you're right or wrong. Mm -hmm. They're going to do it. Okay? And I say, that's the one that said, well, you be sure to do everything required by the IRS. I said, thank you. A probation officer came to me one day while I was out, and she said, the judge would like to know if you'd go to the IRS office. I said, sure, I'd be glad to. I ran a problem. So I wrote him a letter and told him I was coming, and I was going to bring a tape recorder, and I may bring a friend with me. And, and uh, so I went in at 10 o'clock. He puts a piece of paper in front of me. He said, I want you to sign this. And I said, I'm signing nothing until you sign this. And I gave him a piece of paper and said, I have all my constitutional rights. Nothing here can be held against me in a tax court or court of law. He said, you know you don't have no constitutional rights in here. I said, where are you? He said, you're in the IRS office. And he said, I, I, I put my tape recorder on. He said, you can't have that tape recorder. I said, why not? He said, well, I don't have one. I said, go get one. <laughs> so he runs around and finally gets one. He's so nervous he can't try and stop him. I turned it on for him. With him. And he said, you won't sign this paper? I said, no. They wanted to go back, wanted me to sign a paper saying they'd go back 10 years of my life see if there's anything wrong with me. Well, you're a bunch of idiots. You're crazy than I thought you were. So I said, no, I ain't signing it. And he takes a book and he slams it. And he said, well, I guess this case is closed. Bam. And I said, man, I hate your attitude. I come here to be nice, young know, man. And uh, so the probation officer called me and she said, well, I knew they wouldn't change your mind and you didn't change theirs. And the judge just said, thank you for going. I said, okay, no problem. Now, if it was mandatory for you and you and you to fill it out, I would have had to fill them out and pay whatever they said I got to pay. See, if it was mandatory, if it was a law, okay, let's go one step further. The House of Representatives. What position is the Speaker of the House as far as the government is concerned? Do you have any idea? What's the question again? What's the, his position? Third in line. Mm -hmm. Is that the presidency? He's third in line to be President of the United States. He signs a letter every year to West Publishing Company. West Publishing Company publishes all the 54 titles in the United States. And when he writes that letter, he, he, he specifically states which of the 54 titles are positive law. Okay? Title 26, income tax. Okay? Has never by, been written by any speaker of the House, has never listed Title 26 as positive law. 
As a matter of fact, of the 53 titles, there was only 19 of them that are positive all. The rest of them are codification. What's codification? Codification means it's widely used by the courts and the legislature, but has no legal authority. Hmm. And then how could, did they have the authority to punish you, to put you in jail? Because you gave it to them. When you signed that paper down on the bottom of that thing, you signed under penalty of perjury. Penalty of perjury means if I made one dollar mistake, you can do whatever you want to with me. I don't give them that right. I don't, I, 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 I'm not under God to give it to them. See? Because you wouldn't sign. That was no, because I, 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 it's, it's, it's wrong to start with. They, they have no authority over me. Now, when you take, I said to Rob Woodall, I, I, I showed him Title 26. I, I, I showed him where it is. And all, and he calls me one day on the phone. He said, Davis, I just now want, found out why you say 26 is not law. I said, how do you say that? He said, we just voted on Title 54 and made it positive law. The other's not voted on by Congress to make it possible. It's not law. If it's not law, am I supposed to obey it? Am I mandatory to obey it? No. But then how do they still, but I still don't understand how they have the authority, the authority to... They don't have the authority to. To put you in jail, they just did. No, no, they don't put me, the IRS never put me in jail. Okay, I was in jail because of conspiracy. I was gonna, <coughs> they wrote the new law. They wrote the conspiracy law in 1983, put me in jail in 1984. I'm the first person and the first preacher to ever be charged under the under the conspiracy law. Okay. Okay, under exactly. Title 18. Title 18 is part of the law. They, they, they did. So there's no IRS thing in my, in, in my trial at all. Because they know it's like a, a, in Macon, Georgia, I had a pre-trial, okay? And I was still my own attorney at the time. And so I called the IRS agent to the stand because I was charged with using cash. Okay, I'll accept that charge. I was charged with mail fraud. I was charged with wire fraud. <clears throat> the mail fraud, a lady in our church, the IRS, confiscated her mother's car, not her car, her mother's car, because they said she owed the IRS $500. So she came to me and said, what preacher, what should I do? I said, well, if it was me, I'd do this, 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 and this. So she went home, she wrote the letter, she licked the letter, she sealed the letter, she signed it, sealed the letter, put the stamp on the letter, put it in the mailbox. I was charged mail fraud for that letter. But the judge threw that out. I was charged with wire fraud, because he had 12 cassette tapes that the IRS was following me around the country and recording what I was saying. And the judge threw that out because it's foolishness, you know. But that's what they try to do. They try to ruin your name, see, of all these different charges. Well, he got up to 200 years in prison, you know, and all that kind of baloney. <clears throat> so uh, I was, I've never been. So when I was on the, I called an IRS agent to the, to the stand. And I said to the judge, I said, uh, um, now I'm going to ask this gentleman if he's got a bill for it. He said, all right. I said, you have a bill for it? He said, yeah. I said, get it out. He got it out. I said, open it up. He opened it up. I said, judge, this man uses cash. We need to charge him. He said, Davis, you made your point. That's all right. Throw it out. See, that, that, see this, yeah, that's like that. And people fall for that stuff. And, and so we just had that, I've had that Irish man in such a tither before the day was out that uh, they just, they, you know, they, they, when anybody gets a letter from the IRS, I give them three questions to ask. You know, and one of these honey, one of these sticky letters with honey all over the oh, I'm sure, you know, you're so nice, you tell me. And, and, and once I get that three letter, three questions, they never hear from me again. And what are those questions? The question is, number one is Title 26, positive law. And number two, is it mandatory that I have a social security number? Okay. Number three, is it mandatory that I file a 1040? Okay. Now, if they're answering them, it's going to be to yours and my favor. That's the reason they don't want to answer it. If they take me to, to court, okay, the first thing that they have to do is I've got a return receipt 
from that they received this letter, they signed for it, but they didn't answer it. Now, Judge, if they'll answer these questions, we can go on with the trial. <laughs> the judge is not going to make them answer it, he just called a mistrial. It's over with. Because they don't want to admit that it's true. Hmm. They write it in their books. I've got the IRS books that said the first sentence in that book said our, uh, uh, our tax assessment bill on individual self-assessment and voluntary. The very first letter. And, and it's, the manus the, it's, a, it's a manual to only be seen by authorized IRS agents. They don't care. They don't care. Now, don't run out and start doing it, okay? Pray hard. <laughs> no more. If I had to go to work for a company, which I did, I worked for Trade Bank International, and they wanted me to file a W-9. Okay. You ever read one? In what? You ever read one? W-9? W-4, W-9, I don't know what it's called. Mm -hmm. What does it say? <laughs> Remember, if you turn it over on the back, which they don't even give you a back portion anymore, but if you get a back portion of it, it says you can take all your tax exemptions at the beginning of the year instead of the end of the year. Okay? So I have the, it gives me the option to have 15 exemptions. Well, I don't have 15 children. That's what everybody thinks that 15 is for, children. No, I've got 15 exemptions. So I take my exemptions. Okay? Now it's and, 14. Sir? It's 14 now. 14? 14. Okay, yeah. well, they're, they're still messing with it. It was 99, see. Uh oh. When, when years ago when I started this, it was, it was 99. But then they knocked it all the way down to 9, and then they brought it up to 15 and back down to 14 again. But anyway, and so whatever this company that I work for thinks that they have to take my money, that's, uh, let, them, let them have it. The state tax, they don't take anything out. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't file here to back. I just, you know, it was experience. I, I can't. I, I didn't give it to them. They took it. Mm -hmm. See? Unconstitutionally and unbiblically. Constitution and no capitation or other direct tax shall be laid. And it's never been amended and never been superseded. So you just allowed them to take your money even though you knew that it was not theirs to take? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, you know, you, your boss don't understand. Don't want to understand. The sadness. And what's the difference with the 1099? Again, if you're a 1099... Oh, 10, 1099s are just... 1099, 1099s are just... They said they sent a thing with your name on it. Right. As I said, we get about 60 of them a year. We don't care. We don't file. You said it, fine. Did you give them? Yeah, go on. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Why? I don't have to. Show me the law that says I have to. See, that's my constant thing. I'll be glad. Somebody said, well, you don't pay any taxes, do you? I sure do. I pay all my lawful taxes. See? <laughs> Consumption tax is a, is, a, is a proper tax. Sales tax? <laughs> Property tax, that's a, that's a proper tax. See, school tax isn't. When I was going to run for governor of the state of Georgia, and that was one of the things that I, that I had, and, and that's when Georgia slammed a, a thing on me, but we beat that real quickly. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a, uh, uh, you see, this is serious. Mm -hmm. I take it very serious. Right. Uh, because uh, I have a responsibility to people, number one, as a pastor. I'm not a pastor now, but I've pastored for years. 54 years I've been preaching. I still have a responsibility to people that I meet to teach them what the Bible says, what is truth, study, truth, study, truth. When I was head of the tea parties, I started two tea parties here, one in Lawrenceville and one in, in, in Buford. And our theme was study truth, two words, study truth. The Constitution is truth, study it. No. It's a Christian's responsibility. It's a pastor's responsibility to teach it to his folks. That's, that's the problem today. See, I've had preachers say to me, well, I'll do whatever the government tells me to do, even if it's wrong. God help us. What kind of preacher are you? He was an independent Baptist preacher too. See? It's, 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 Jesus is, is coming, and he's, he, he's coming soon. And, and because we just, we've got this thing so messed up, it's pathetic. And preachers are not getting any better. Sorry to say, oh, they good salvation preachers, and that, that's great. But is that all that's in this book? No, sir. The book of Proverbs is one of the most 
important book to study uh, how I'm to have a wife, a family, children, business, government, every bit of that. Mm -hmm. See? It doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that's where I'm different than the average bear. I'm an old-fashioned King James. I'm an old-fashioned Independent Baptist. And I'm an old-fashioned Christian. And I've been saved 69 years and been preaching for 54. I've been studying Biblical Constitutionalism for 39 years. And, and uh, that is it. Uh, you know, you got to pray about what you're going to do. Uh, if you're going to work for somebody and they want you to fill out it for them, get, take all the deductions that you can take. Uh -huh. Just let them keep it. See, you don't have to file. If, if this form that I'm supposed to file from the IRS, number one, have you ever paid, have you ever paid property tax? <clears throat> Well, let's say that you your property tax is paid like the IRS wants your money. Okay? They send you a card and say, fill it out and tell us how much you're going to pay for your property. That's the way they do it, isn't it? Huh? Is that the way they do it? No, they just tell you this is how much you owe. <clears throat> and what should the IRS do if it was lawful? They tell you how much you owe, wouldn't they? But no, you've got to sit down and you've got to take your time. I know bookkeepers that get paid for that. <clears throat> One of the things in the Declaration of Independence is the involuntary servitude. The government cannot make me work for somebody for nothing. Well, I'm not going to be a bookkeeper for them. I know bookkeepers get paid good. I have a, 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 a business. <clears throat> Policemen get paid somewhat, but they get paid. Yeah, they want me to be a policeman over my workers. I don't want to be. I don't take social security numbers from my workers. Here's why. I don't pay their rent. I don't pay their light bill. I don't pay their food bill. If they think they got a tax bill, that's their responsibility, not mine. I'll give them the amount of money that they ask for for their for the thing. I want that amount of hours. I'll give them that amount of money. And that's our contract. Mm -hmm. Like the contract with me and them is not to be their bookkeeper. It's to make money and pay them their wages. That's what it is. My son has never paid. And, uh, and it's just, it's because, I mean, and it's not easy, no. I can imagine. No. It's easy for us because I've been doing it for so long. <clears throat> But to start doing it, it's not easy. You do not have to file. And let me say this, you're a lady, and him and I both understand that. And it's harder on ladies than anybody else. There's a reason I beg wives to come with their husbands. Boy, they've gone home now, they want to go to those meetings. And I said, if you don't bring your wife, you don't belong to be here. Because he's going to go home and say, man, we don't have to pay taxes anymore. That's not what, that's not what I taught, you know. And it scares the wife to death. Some would even divorce over it. I don't want that. That's not what it's for. <laughs> See, it's supposed to be under God. And a man can't bring his wife out, I don't want to teach him. Because it's, it's too hard on you. Hmm. And so you just, you, you have to, you have to know that's what God wants. And you know that's what God wants and nothing else matters. Okay, so what about in the area of, uh, so I have um, the IRS the thinks that I owe some money from something that I had not filed, something they thought I had not filed, but it turns out that I did file it and they just had lost it, but then they found it again. But that's still on the records. And so, uh, you know, what was it, what was it for? Uh, for the my employees social security they're filing their little things everything that my employees made uh, I yeah. sent it to the Social Security Administration they said they didn't receive it and then I sent copies to them again and they said we did not have it I sent it a third time and finally they said oh here it is but anyway so there's an $8,000 charge saying that you didn't file correctly back in 2007 mm -hmm. and you will have to go through the process to You'll have to pay the late fees or whatever you'll have to do and try to get out of it. Okay, well, yeah. <clears throat> what, where's, where's the situation now? 
Did they recognize that they have the papers that you filed back in 07? Yes, but they still said, I have to, even though it's on their books, I still am, I have to prove it. Okay. You still have to? Prove that they have it. Right. <laughs> See, is that, is that law? No. That's not, that's not proper law. <laughs> Never go to a tax court. Why? Number one. When you go to a tax court, you are the plaintiff. What does the plaintiff, what is it that the plaintiff doesn't have that the defense does have? The plaintiff does not have a right to a trial by jury because he's a plaintiff. Why are you the plaintiff? Because you filed against the IRS and they make you the plaintiff. So you never get a trial by jury. Okay? So if they ever ask you to go to ask you to go to a trial by jury, I mean by a tax court. tax court, tell them no, just don't show up. Why? Then they got to turn around and make it a, 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 a um, they have to file a claim against you now. Now you get a, tax, now you get a trial by jury because you're the defense and they're the plaintiff. They don't want to do that. See, they want to stay out of those positions because we can take, in, take them in court and then prove all these matters about the way they are, and what's the jury? 99% of the time, they tell the Irish you're wrong. So, that's how that's why. They, so don't ever go to a tax, to a tax court. Now, is it different because it was my business? Uh, anything that has to do with my business? Title 26. If it's under Title 26, it's not law. That, that's that's just uh, that's all the way up to the White House. Okay. Title 26 is not law, so it doesn't make any difference. There's no place that says you've got to do it. I run a business. I run three businesses. Okay? I was in the bartering business. I invented a product. I sell to the United States government. I sell my cleaner degree to the government. Okay? And, 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 and then we have an asphalt business. My son runs that now. I don't know. And, and so we, we don't file anything. Because if they say something to me, what do I say? But show me the law. Be glad to. I'm very law abiding. Show me the law. I'll do anything it says. Well, but Title 26, well, here's Title 26 law. Well, I don't know that you should if you're going to tell me it's law. I pull out their book, page one, letter from, I watched them from Tip O'Neill on down, so I don't know about after, before that. And, and, and page one on Title one, there's the letter, and there they state the possible. There's 20 is already. That possible law and Title 26 is not there. Hmm. So how can you tell me it's law? Well, it's an amendment. No, it's not an amendment. Well, we have 16th Amendment. Well, what does the 16th Amendment amend? <laughs> See, I mean, you, 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 we just back them up in that form. They've got to be because they're liars and they're thieves. I've seen them take ladies' purses and dump it on the on the desk and pick up the little odd things and hand the purse back to them. I walked in the IRS office with tape recorders, took a television station in with me one time. Look, you see in a, a dirty room and, and it's been dark and you turn the lights on, the cockroaches run, that's an IRS office. You know, they, they dive under the desk, they hide behind the counters. I go in with a tape recorder, sat it down, I just set it down. She said, mmm. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, it's not on. Oh, okay, well, you can't have it when I turn it on. <laughs> they just go bananas. See? And it's sad, see? And, and they're telling everybody else that they're law. They're, they're right here. Right and yet, when you just pull out their book and it says voluntary, then I believe. Have they ever told you it's voluntary? Have you ever asked them? You see what I'm saying? No, it's not your fault. Even though I'll still, still say it is because you're a Christian, you're, you're a citizen of the United States, and, and your Bible instructs us to. But we just get. Well, we don't. Don't analyze. Question? I um, want to be able to start a business, and, um, and I, I'm told, well, I need to be able to do a DBA and file um, either with my social security number or EIN number in order to get a DB DBA and doing business as. And so when I do that, then what am I doing? Okay. 
legally? <coughs> Your social security number. Is it mandatory to have a social security card? No. FICA, FICA, right? What does that stand for? Federal Insurance Corporation of America. What's that? Federal Insurance Corporation? No. no. Federal Insurance Contribution, Contribution. Act. Oh. Contribution Act. Oh. What's an IRA? Independent. It's a contribution. Oh. That's why Obama can say, I can take your IRA and leave you a piece of paper saying the government owes you this amount of money. IRAs are very dangerous. Four ones are very dangerous to lose because he's already talked about it once. Nobody, nobody paid attention. They didn't, they didn't know what he was saying. Yeah. And he he's, he'd possibly could take that and take all your IRAs and four ones and give you a certificate wow. and say, we owe you this money. Because they're 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 contribution act. Listen to it on the uh, when they talk about it, they talk about them being contributions. Okay, now what? Well, Social Security. Here's what I do. Okay, and I have no problem doing DBA. Fine. Here's my Social Security number. I don't care what to do with it. That's my Social Security number. That's what you asked for. All right. Now what are you going to do with it? Well, nothing. Okay. What did you file? File what? Listen, lady, I pay all my all my lawful taxes. Never have to worry about me with that. So what you file it with them? You're running your business. That's it. They didn't say you had to give us more paper. They'd like for you to. Mm -hmm. See? I don't. I've had it for 20 years. Yeah. Never have one come at me. Yeah, well, this last uh, administration has been um, using the IRS through Eric Holder to go after the Tea Party people. How to make it different? How that? Um, it's just those that listen. See, that's 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 the one thing about it. See, uh, when they when they, if they don't have authority, they when they come at you, if they don't have any authority, you don't have to answer them. If they come and knock on your door, just you leave. Get out of here. You have no business on my. This is private property. Mm -hmm. Now they came to my wife. You know what they told my wife? You know what the parole officer told my wife? If you'll divorce your husband, we'll take care of you from now on. Wow. My wife said, get out of my house and don't she? Because my wife would tell her that we live by faith. She said, how do you make it? She said, we live by faith. And she said, don't ever say that to me again. My wife said, you get out of my house. And she left right away. One of them came to the house one time when I was poor. And uh, the first thing they knocked on the door, and uh, I said, who are you? Well, you're not going to treat me like you treat all the rest of them. I said, how do I treat the rest of them? He said, well, you're not going to treat me like that. And I said, who are you? And he said, I'm from there. I said, get off my property. Now, he said, well, I'm from your parole officer. I said, wait just a minute. I picked up my mobile porta phone and called my parole officer and I said, I got an IRS agent out here harassing me. She said, let me talk to him. I had him the phone. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Threw the phone at me and took off. <laughs> I don't know what she told him. But he don't have a right on that. See? If, if it was lawful and it was right, well, the mandate had been all over me. See? I have no problem of spending the five years away from my wife and family in the Atlanta Penitentiary. If it's used as a lesson for other Christians to learn that we don't have to obey an ungodly and unconstitutional government in my life, I, 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 will, I will disobey them to obey the laws of God. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. And if we will, if Christians will learn that, in that five years led over 200 men to Christ. Yeah, look, look at it. I had this Bible with me. Mm. They told me I couldn't have it. But look, look at all these names. I, I could not have the pages for any more. But there's over 200 men. They got saved. Three of them are preaching today. Okay. We had, I just met the, 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 the warden that was in Atlanta when I was in there. Uh, and, and his statement was, Mr. Davis should have never been here. And I said, no, Lord, I was supposed to be here. And I said to God, God, if I go, just let me be Joseph of old, that's all. 
and 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 the, well, the assistant warden came to me. He said, "This place has never been in the condition it's in today. Would you consider staying?" <laughs> I said, "Are you crazy? <laughs> I won't go home, Mama. Good night, you keep out of your mind, you know." But we led guards to Christ. Uh, the, I mean, uh, just just tremendous, just wonderful, just wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, dope dealers. One guy tattoos from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, you know. Big burly fella, crying like everything, you know. And uh, one day I'm home and they, they, they would say, can I call you? And I said, sure, call me anytime. Well, that's a collect call from there, you know. And so the phone rang and it was, can you skip the yeah, I'll accept it. And this, he, he said, he said, preacher, this is Ed. And Ed's one of those just big old burly fella. He said, just walking past the phone, wanted to call you. You know, just precious, precious man. Mm -hmm. Precious man. Love everyone. And, uh, but I was there for a reason. Yeah. We started with 15 men in chapel. My first Sunday I was there. I left. We had the Catholic church closed down altogether. We were running 175 in Sunday school which they never had in that prison. The chaplain came in on Sunday school to say good morning and left after that. And we had the regular service. I made them put a big tank in there. We baptized men in there. Uh, just, I mean, they're precious men, boy. Just, just, just hungry mm -hmm. for, for truth and, 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 and uh, uh, strictness to be obedient. See, they haven't ever been, been taught obedience. And, 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 and truth, with truth, so that's their problem. And you love these guys. I had to iron their clothes, I'd do anything, so they, if they promised me they'd come to church. And man, I'd have a stack of shirts and riches out like that to iron, you know. But all I knew, every one of them, man, they're going to be in church. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And they're just precious, yeah. precious. All because I taught this in jail. What are they going to do, put me in jail? You know, hello. Yeah. Um, so we told them. Any questions? So if we get a letter from the IRS saying, Just call uh, me. Yeah, but what if you're not here? Study. Show yourself approved. No, no, study your constitution. No, see. No. Read, uh, everything that I just told you is in this book. Okay? You'll see the documents in this book. The, 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 um, uh, 50 tax on individuals, you'll see it in this book. Ohio become a state of union, you'll see it in this book. <clears throat> I don't teach anything that I can't back it up with proof. I just don't do it. And it's all in this book. It's all right there. Mm. And I just want I just want people to see that that's that's what it's there. And uh, the, the when I went to get them from the Library of Congress in Washington D.C., they were charging me a dollar a page for the for the. Uh, one for Ohio. I was getting some on banking because I'm proving the banks are operating wrong. And, and, uh, and that, then I said, oh yeah, I want one more. I want the one on the, the victory tax on end of it. You can't have it. I said, what do you mean you can't have it? You, well, you can have it, but you can't have it certified. What does that mean? That means I can have it, but I can't use it because it's not certified. I said, no, you certified all these. I want that one certified. He said, you can't have it. I said, how much would it cost? He said, a $1,000 page. I said, print it. I had somebody behind me, that, somebody back home that I can call and say, hey, I need some money right away. But it cost me $17,000. To have that one document, just because it was, if, if he hadn't agreed to do it, that's the only reason he did it, because he said he was going to do it. But he didn't want to. They don't want you to have that. That's why the congressman, they, they don't want to look at that. Because then they're responsible. Well, I make them responsible. I'm going after Cruz. I'm going after Paul. I'm going after all these of them that want to run. I send them a book. Tell them I want to meet him with them. When John Linder gave up his seat here in Georgia, we had eight men run for that job. I'd spent two and a half hours with every every man, with a witness, individual. Only two of them knew anything about Rob Woodall and Joey Heights. Now Joey's up there now. He won the one and, and uh, he came in second. When, but he, he's there now. Clay Cox, 
was a state senator. And he was running for the big house. And I said, Clay, I said, do you know anything about the Constitution? Paul oh, Preacher said, I got one right here in my pocket. I said, I didn't ask you where you had one. Do you know anything about it? Well, I don't know it like you do, Preacher. I said, stay home. That's your workbook when you go up there. When you send your kids to school, they don't take their workbook to English with them. You, you're going to get all over them, aren't you? Well, if you go to Washington without your workbook, you don't know what your workbook is. What are you, what are you going to do with that? And, and that's, that's the way we should be with them. If you don't know what your work what, what your work about the Constitution, if you don't know what it says, why do you swear to hold it? Don't know what it says. Well, I definitely admit to not knowing <clears throat> what it says. Okay, what it, okay, here's another. This is just, it all gets so convoluted because there's so many things. So, uh, having not made a lot of money <clears throat> last year, and I had health care, anyway, I got into having the Obamacare, or whatever. So, but it's taken, it's part of it. I, mean, I only pay a small amount, and the rest of it's taken out of my taxes when I file taxes this, you know, this next year. It'll be from the credit that's in my taxes. So, don't I have to file to be able to say, or do I need to go and say I will go back and pay this amount of money? Who said you had to file? <laughs> I'm going to stand firm on the fact that, that God nor our government, the constitutional government, has told me that I have to file. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what they say to me or say on the airwaves that everybody has it, I, 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 I just don't do it. Now, what will happen? I was going to say my payment was based on what they, what I predicted right. to make, and right. etc. So. And your prediction was right or wrong? I don't know. We won't, don't know yet how much I'll make this year, but yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> Why do you think you have to file? I'm just wondering if I have to because supposedly the... What does the law say? That I have found. <laughs> Our tax has been built on individual self-assessment voluntary compliance, right? If you want to volunteer to pay it, you volunteer to pay it. Go ahead. But if you want to... If, if you want to do... <laughs> but I'm paying $25 a month for insurance that they say costs $400 a month. Okay. So, see? I don't mean to be flippant. No, I'm trying to understand. Right. I really want to understand. I, 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 you see, I, 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 it's just that I have to be hard-nosed to y'all to make you really stop and think, really, that, you know, how can he do that? Okay? It's because I've done it. I've done the same. I was in the same. 1973, I was in the same. What are they going to do to me? I, in 1974, I didn't file because I didn't have enough money to file. Mm -hmm. okay. No, in 73, I didn't file because I didn't have enough money to file. 74 came along. They ain't said nothing to me. I said, well, that was pretty good. But then I began to learn, and, and from that time, I never filed. Mm -hmm. And they, when I came off, when I was on... When I was in prison, it was, I call it vacation. So I was on vacation with the government. They paid me for being there, 11 cents an hour, and and so. But uh, they, they, and when I come home, they sent me a letter, and so I said I owed them ninety thousand dollars in taxes. Yeah, yes. You know why? Because of all the money I made from uh, 84, 85, 86, 87. Well, I was in a caboose. <laughs> and they sent me to, they like, so I just, oh man, so I wrote them back. These three words. Sent off them, I wrote a word from them since. <laughs> and so, in your situation, they told you that you could pay $25 a month and maybe more at the end of the thing. Okay? Until they tell you more, I wouldn't. And so if I don't file and then they tell me 
Well, you didn't file, so you if, have to. Pay if this. you don't file and they write you a letter, just call me. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> just call me because you will never read a letter that says you are required to pay this amount. They request. Okay, is a request a requirement? No. If it is, I'll send you a letter every month. Tell you how much you need to pay me. <laughs> because I request it, you see. And they're the same way. So if, if, if you get any mail from them, okay, uh, just, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to spend time with you and, and go over it. And uh, now as far as the past is concerned, uh, have you got any letters from them lately about it? Uh, not well. About six months ago is when we were. I would try to call okay. and speak to somebody about what is really happening because I've sent all this to you already. Here's here's the only thing that I that, that that I say. If you took money out of somebody's check to send for FICA, that money is to be sent to the IRS mm -hmm. because it really belonged to didn't belong to you. It belonged to the person that you took it from. Mm -hmm. See, and 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 you, you it's, it, it's not lawful. It's just right you know, to do it okay now if that's if that's what they're after you for and you've it's already just not filing it's not filing it. yeah no, we don't we won't worry about that anymore but i did i mean even though i did file yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, <laughs> but they fine. thought that i had uh, okay. you know so uh, who was the proof on you were them i guess it's on them it's on them who did they try to shift it to yeah sure. not because they're dirty rotten low down thieving dogs sorry if you don't want me to call you, I can get out of the job. That's all. Quit your job and come out and get American. <laughs> what about the state of Georgia? What about the state of Georgia? George, Georgia State. What does the Constitution say? Constitution of Georgia or Constitution? No, National Constitution. Well, you already told us that. Huh? You already told us that. No, I didn't tell you that. Okay, you, told you didn't me. answer that question. Okay. <clears throat> what, what's the Anytime a state makes a law contrary to the national constitution, it is unlawful. Mm. Okay? If it was lawful, why doesn't, why doesn't Florida have a, a state income tax? Mm. Why doesn't Tennessee have a state income tax? Because it's not lawful. Mm. Georgia had to go to take advantage. There's another reason I want to be good for the state of Georgia. I still may run for the house, I don't know. I just don't know how much energy I got. If my wife was well, I'd do it, but she's yeah. not well, and that's what yeah. the only thing that hurts me back. And I, and I say it's wrong, I mean, I should do it anyway, but I just can't. Yeah. I, I, my household's too important. Yeah. But that's what I, if, if I run for the house, that's the basis I'll run. No state tax, no school tax. See? Yeah. So my philosophy is, if, if you, if, Christian school wants a Christian school. They have to finance it. They have to build their buildings, have their literature, and everything else. Yeah. Okay. If an atheist wants a school, let them build it, build it, have his text, do whatever he wants. Yeah. I don't want to have to pay for my Christian school and my and the atheist school at the same right. time. Right. Why do people have to do that? Don't have to. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. They're not happy with me about that either. <laughs> yeah. So what about it's logical, it's, 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 it's common, logic, you see, and that's the philosophy that we've lost. Okay. I want an answer, okay, fine, I get an answer. When I, when I first started learning, I, 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 man, I, just, I wonder why, okay. Hey, the IRS, man, they, you know, the one thing they do is swallow you. you know? And I had the same thought and fear until I started talking to some agents. Now, they're dumb and they're stumped. The lawyers are next to penal. 